I want to welcome everybody and a chance to eavesdrop on a conversation that I believe that is so profound and prolific. Two of the smartest people I know in the world are on this conversation with me, and uh, you get to eavesdrop and learn some information about some opportunities, whether you're looking for a job, looking to upgrade a position, or whether you're in a management or entrepreneurial position and you're trying to get some clues about how to steer uh, your organization and or church through uh, the vicissitudes of the times that we're living in as it relates to COVID-19 and what I like to call the tremors of COVID-19 because it's not just about the pandemic that is sweeping the country. It is also uh, the economic impact, the psychological impact, the emotional impact. It, it impacts literally every aspect of our lives. Uh, I am pleased to have uh, my, I call her uh, my sidekick and cohort, uh, Hattie Hill uh, with me, who is the chief executive officer for the T.D. Jakes Foundation. And so you're gonna learn a lot from her. She's got a long prestigious career and then has been a CEO and worked in leadership most of her life. Welcome Hattie, I'm glad to have you. Thank you, sir. And our very, 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 very special guest is uh, Fred Propals. I'm proud to call him uh, my friend. I've added his name to my resume to get brownie points. Uh, Fred has been since 2013 uh, leading Beck and uh, Beck Enterprise in an amazing way. Uh, he also gives back to the community in a multiple uh, multiplicity of ways, and one of those ways is by serving on the Dallas and Dallas Citizens Council. Uh, Fred, we're glad to have you. Thanks for being a part of this. Thank you, Bishop. Good to be here. You know, uh, one of the things that makes me so excited about this conversation, particularly in our community, we only see leadership through the pinnacle of uh, stage and uh, marches and what are you doing if you're not on stage, you're not marching, or you're not handing out turkeys, what are you doing for the community? But in reality, let's talk a few minutes about the fact that the community actually evolves through meetings like this and boardrooms and executives making decisions behind the scenes, uh, whether they're elected officials, uh, whether they are CEOs like yourselves or whether they're uh, faith leaders or community leaders, it's not really the big showy microphone yelling at people that gets things done. It's really the reasoned, rational, strategic alliance of people working behind the scenes. And that's why I'm really excited about T.D. Jakes Foundation, because we have uh, committed ourselves to work behind the scenes to really get things done rather than to just make noise. And our associations span uh, from the faith world to the corporate world to the entertainment world uh, throughout the international realm as well. And we have committed ourselves through the foundation uh, to make those connections in such a way that we can get the messages that are needed to the people that need them uh, or the job opportunities, which is what we're getting ready to talk about in a minute, uh, that are needed to people that need them. You can find out things that you don't find out otherwise. A lot of times, by the time the information trickles down to our community, the money is gone, the job is gone, all the cars have left the car lot and the parking lot is empty. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen. And so we have formed an alliance uh, uh, and many alliances, I probably should say, but one of them was the Dallas Citizens Council, so that we can work together to get things done. I wanted to ask Fred, I was reading the magazine and there were some interesting things in an interview uh, that was done with you where you talked about how you communicated and the importance of communication with your staff as vast as it is uh, uh, during during this whole COVID-19 process. Can you talk about best practices for surviving uh, things that are out of control? One of the things that became really clear to me was that no one on our team had a clear playbook for what we were about to go through. And I think leadership is ultimately about people. You know, you manage stuff, but you lead people. And our team here at BEC, but also our Citizens Council team, they just want to know what you're thinking. And I think leaders have to be fine, particularly those of us who are probably more type A, which is what propelled us to want to lead and to these roles, we have to be willing to be more vulnerable when we don't have all of the answers. To say, 
I'm not sure what we're about to face. And some of this is out of my control, but the things that are in my control are how much do I care, mm-hmm. right? Caring is still within my control. Mm-hmm. How honest will I be? You know, this is a time to look people in their eyes and to be transparent based on what you know and to be honest, even if it's not what they want to hear. This is a time for more communication. You know, I said to our team, it is impossible to over communicate in a crisis because people are afraid and the fear of what you don't know is usually greater than the fear of what you could know. So let's tell them everything we know. Let's admit that the situation is fluid. And so, you know, we have tried to be really connected. Connection doesn't have to be physical and engagement can certainly be, you know, very different from presence. So we may not be present with each other, but we can be more engaged with each other. And so one good habit that I've asked all my leaders to do is pick up the phone every day and call 10 people, Mm -hmm. 10 people in our ecosystem. It could be employees. uh, It could be other teammates. It could be partners. It could be clients, but this is a time to connect to people. Mm -hmm. This is a time to make sure people know that we're going to be here and we're going to support and we're going to do everything in our power to exhibit the kind of caring that we talk about. And so I don't know exactly where this journey is taking us, but I do know if we lean in together and if we care for each other, and if we're each willing to take a little less, that we will help the majority of us get through this. And so that's kind of, you know, the the kind of approach we've tried to take. You know, it's funny you should say that because my first instinct uh, was to start communicating more and more. I started doing Facebook lives. I started communicating on Instagram once I figured out how to how to do conversations on Instagram, which took a minute for a boomer. Uh, I really knew that it was important for there to be a calming voice and a leadership voice and a voice that helped people emotionally, spiritually, and even directed them toward resources that would help them through the storm. Uh, as a leader and as the chairman of the foundation, I was looking for ways in which we could uh, use our platform in this critical time uh, to move the ball along and to make sure that Things like the CARES Act was made known to the people that needed to know it. Uh, The PPP opportunity, the payroll protection plan was made uh, known to the people that needed, that most needed to know it. Patty, can you talk from a woman's perspective? I know you uh, worked previously uh, before I got to snatch you uh, in in the women's food industry. Can you talk about women and leadership? I think that would be uh, interesting to the audience. Sure. When I look at the leadership that's required and women have always been at um, the helm of leadership, whether behind the scenes or beside or in front. But what is required right now uh, from all of us, and I spent 32 years of my career working in leadership in corporate America. The last uh, six years, seven years ran the Women's uh, women's Leadership Forum uh, for Women's Food Service, and it's all about developing women leaders. And in that role, we were the largest, largest women's organization and all of our clients was the major corporations. So we had to make sure their women were on track. Now, the interesting thing that we learned is that women didn't always progress like they should in their careers. Uh, And and there were challenges on both sides. Oftentimes women did not step up. Other times the companies did not step up. And we partnered with McKinsey to really look at the research around that. And then what were some of the solutions that we could bring so that uh, women could be successful. When you bring that forward to this day and time, right now we are in a critical emergency in our workforce, in the careers. And so I really do believe this is an opportunity for women to step up. Uh, We need all hands on deck. I don't care who you are. It is now time for all hands on deck and uh, women who have often Uh, not stepped up or who are afraid of their ideas. We need every idea. Uh, I was excited to work with executive women around the world. And the result of that is you find that the best idea can come from any place. And that's what we need right now. 